All right, today we are going to do assignment number one. Uh, we're going to make a personal website for ourselves. And this is the stuff that it's going to have on it. Let's take a look. We have, uh, these are our objectives over here. Uh, some sort of title slash greeting. Your name, a short description about yourself. A picture of yourself links to your favorite site. Sites, I should say, not site. Uh... <clears throat> So with the picture of yourself, remember, it doesn't have to be an actual picture of yourself. It could just be something that, you know, your, some of your favorite things or something like that. Let's take a look at what we got here. All right. Let's fix my mask, of course, as always. All right. So in our uh, HTML, right, this is what we're going to do over here. All right. So create a div element. A div defines a section or division of your website. All right. We know this already, hopefully, because we've talked about this before. So here, we don't need our JavaScript today. Let me close that. Let's reload. I don't know why I just, all right. Here we go. We don't need to really need the preview. Let me turn this, make this small. All right, let's make our code a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. All right, so I've got my website. I set up, I, I'm just using one of the the uh, the Hello World uh, things I made up before. So uh, I'm gonna call this, you know, give it a different title. Oops, Mr. Dave's personal site or whatever you want to call it. In our head, that's the only thing we have to worry about in the head. All right, we've got some meta stuff over here. We got our title. We have our script to our JavaScript, which we're not going to use, but we could. We've got a link to our style sheet, style.css, which is down here. For some reason, it doesn't show up in the preview. I don't know why. But anyways, and then we've got a headline over here. So we don't need that headline. Our first step, if we remember, is to make a div. So let's, inside the body, we've got a div. Make sure it's indented. You should do this uh, automatically for you in editing, if you're doing editing. All right, and then we're going to give it an ID attribute and name it my D. I mean, name it, name it my bio. That's what we're doing. All right. So we do ID equals my bio, like that. So here's our attribute, the ID attribute, and here's the value, like that. Create an H1 element and add your name. Okay, let's do an H1. Mr. Dave is my name. Your name is probably different. H1 element is a heading element. All right, they're typically used for headlines and titles. HTML headings are defined with H1, H6 uh, tags. All right, and H1 is the biggest. And inside our CSS, we can make our H1s or H1s through H6s, whatever size we like. But right now, we're just gonna leave it as the default size. Give your H1 a class attribute and set it to name. All right. So inside the H1 class equals name. Like that. There we go. Now, we haven't set up our IDs or classes yet, but we'll get to that eventually. Up next. So H1 through H6. If you don't want to do an H1, you could do a different size. I don't care what size you put in there. All right. Just remember, if you up, up here you put an H1, and down here in your CSS, you have to make sure they uh, coordinate, otherwise it won't work. Or any changes you make. So let's say, for example, you have an H1 in your HTML, but in your CSS, you're styling your uh, H6s, all right? And it's, then obviously those things aren't the same, so they, your, your style won't show up. But since we're giving it a class, all right, anything that we give a class, like say we have, we change this to an H6, right? Anything that we give a class down here of name will be styled this way. So an H1, an H2, an H3, or whatever, if we give it an, uh, a, uh, a class of name, it will, uh, it will take uh, on, on the, uh, the, the CSS uh, selector, with the CSS properties that we gave it or values, or whatever you want to call it. I always get my terms mixed up. All right, 
Uh, HTML paragraphs are defined with paragraph tags, p tags. Create a, a p element and write a description of yourself. All right, and this is one of those times where we're actually going to write like a paragraph in our paragraph tag. All right, I'm just going to put in some you know default text. All right, let me get set. Let me get the. Um, you don't need this. Just copy, I don't know. This. Oops. The wrong one. Tabbing over to the wrong thing. Where am I at? Here we go. Alright. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't the best choice. Yeah, I'm just putting this in here just so it's easier to, for me to see. The computer doesn't care as far as where <coughs> when you type enter. The computer only cares about where your paragraph tag starts and where your paragraph tag ends. I wrote a lot. Well, I didn't write a lot, but I stole a lot. I stole a lot of content from some other website. Ah, uh, so much stuff. All right, maybe my paragraph is too big. All right, maybe I'll make this two paragraphs. I'll put a slash p here. All right. All right. Now, it put the slash p, the closing tag, automatically, but I don't want it. I'm at the end over here. So now we have two paragraphs. All right. Oops, I got closing. Get rid of this one over here. All right. Those are the things you have to look out for when stuff auto completes for you. You have to make sure that if you if it puts a tag in, in the wrong place, you might want to make sure you delete extra tags that, are, that don't need to be there. All right. So let's look what we have so far. I've got my H1, I've got two paragraphs. And so all we need so far, do we have to give them classes or anything? Let me look at the uh, thing, all right. Give your paragraph a class attribute, set it to my description, all right. Class equals, what was it, my description, right? Not description, description. I'm just going to copy this and put this in both things over here. Remember, classes you can use more than once. IDs you only use once. Make sure you put a space here. There we go. All right, next line. What's the next thing? Again, all these spaces I'm here, like here on line 12, right? I have a space between my H1 and my paragraph. Again, the computer doesn't recognize I mean, it sees that we put a space there, but as far as when we put it on our, uh, when we look at our preview, it's not going to automatically put a space. It just says there's no code there, so I just go on to the next line. That's all the computer worries about. And you could do your whole website on one line if you wanted to, but it would look like it very hard as a human being to read it. I mean, my nose is too big. That's the problem with my mask. All right, I'm going to use my glasses to, to lock it down. It's not going to last, but whatever. Do the best I can. All right, where was I? Back to the uh, assignment. HTML images are defined with the image tag. Create an image element. An image element is used to refer to images on your website, blah, blah, blah. Give it a class. I set it to my photo. We'll do that. All right. Add a source attribute, and the source attribute should point to the URL of the picture you chose. All right. Excellent. So let's do, let's find a good picture. Uh, let me see. Let's do, I don't know, um, Archimedes. Let's do, I don't know, let's do a, cl a classroom. Let's do a classroom. Let's go to images. Let's go to tools, usage rights, creative commons. Mm, which one do I want to do? Let's do this one. All right. Copy this image address. 
Um, go back to the assignment here. Okay, so now I'm going to put in our image. Image source equals, and we're going to put in the UR. Whoa, that won't work. All right, it's good. Different picture. Didn't I copy it from here? Copy image address. Let me paste it here. Yeah, I don't want that. All right. Where the all right, let's find a different one then. Let's do another this one. Here is the one. Let's do actually do medium size. The, the smaller size. Medium. Medium free ones. There's Google Classroom. Feet hurt. <laughs> Someone's feet hurt. Alright, their feet hurt. Their feet hurt. Um here, let's do this one. Alright. Kind of a weird looking classroom. Kinda of like the glass doors though. Wait, those that's a, those are shells. Anyways, copy image address. Let's actually paste it before. All right, that's much better. All right, uh, where were we? Back over here. Image source. We'll paste that there. Then we're gonna give it an alt tag of classroom. Remember, image tags are self-closing tags. So you put your slash uh, slash angle bracket slash caret at the end like that. All right, and it's a good idea that every once in a while. Uh, take a preview of what we've done so far. Let's take a look. Oops. This is what we've done so far. So I've got my H1, I've got two paragraphs, and I've got my classroom. All right, good. What's next? Let's take a look at our PDF. Oh, well, we have to give it a class too. Let me see. Uh, add a class attribute and set it to my photo. All right. So we can do that. Class equals my photo, like that. Again, when you do like class and alt tag and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't really matter the order that you put it in. Uh, so I could put the class like up front next to the image. I mean, the image type thing has to go in front because that's not uh, that's not a um, an attribute. That's you know the actual tag name. That has to be first, of course. But as far as the other stuff, the source, the alt, and the class, uh, that doesn't really matter what order they go in. Traditionally, though, after the image, usually you're gonna put the source next, and then at the end you put the alt. But sometimes people, you'll, people might put the class up in front over here. All right. Why don't I put the? I feel. Let's do that. I'm gonna put the class up front. The reason why I'm putting the class up front is. It makes it easier to find where it is because normally, like I said, you're gonna the like you see like in the um, I'm doing this in the wrong one. Let me see. I need to close all these extra projects. Leave this one and close this one. Here's the one I'm supposed to be doing it. All right. This is the wrong one. And this is the one I'm doing. All right, here we go. Close this one. Yeah. All right. So I did all that work on the wrong thing. So let's do um, it was class equals my photo, right? So as I was saying, I put I like to put the classes up front on my images just because you see the classes over here, all right? The classes, my paragraph is here, the class here, the ID is here. So when you're looking for the class on your images, it's just you know you're kind of training yourself to look for the class up front. Again, the order doesn't really matter, but it's nice to be consistent. All right, what are we at? So we got our picture now. We got our URL. I got all that good stuff. All right. We have an image tag. So it doesn't need a closing tag. Add an alt attribute. We did that already. Again, that's just a descriptor, a description for description. Yeah, that's the right word. <laughs> description of whatever it is. That's in your uh, in your picture. So someone who can't see your actual website, they'll have like a they have different uh, methods that can will basically like describe that's what's going on uh, through auditory means what's in your picture, and then it uses the alt tag in order to achieve, to achieve that. All right. HTML links are defined with a tag. All right, create two uh, a elements, add an href and some blah blah, add a class of site links to both. Okay, so we're gonna link to two different websites. A H R E F. Um, all right, where am I gonna link to? I'm gonna link to. 
Um, CNET.com, where I get a lot of my tech information. Okay. And I'm going to link to Archimedes Academy. Oops. That or the place where I work, and you get your education, right? Now we have to give them a class of site link, right? A class of site link, site links to both, to both. All right, all right. Here we go. Give a class equals oops, lowercase site links like this all right so let's just copy this right all right let's preview it this is what we have over here you notice that the the uh, the links they're both next to the picture they're not underneath it because we didn't say there wouldn't we didn't put any, any um any kind of uh code that says you know go to the next line or anything so it's going to go right next to each other so this is what we have all right we should have a, a head with a title body with an uh, div id of my bio an h1 an image they put the image first all right and then they have a paragraph and then two links great now we're going to do the CSS. Name it custom.css. Just call it style.css. You can just leave it style.css if you want. Uh, Alright, this again, this part is done for us already. So we kind of skip over this part. But if you were doing this in, um, in like uh, GitHub or something like that, on a, your own, or on a regular text editor, you don't, wouldn't want to skip these steps over here. All right. Define the style how you would like. Try to figure out some of these, right? Align everything center, right? You can do that all in one element. What contains the whole bio? Well, what contains the whole bio? Hmm, this whole div over here does, right? Make your photo 300 pixels wide and 300 pixels height. Add a border, all right? Give your headline a larger font and underline it. The paragraph is really long. Let's fix that. Let's add a width of 500 pixels. So these are different things that we can do, all right? You can uh, do the example like I uh, give you over here, and uh, or you can mess around with it um, and do other things if you want. You can go to W3 Schools. And there's a whole lot of different um, CSS attributes that you can mess around with. Alright, <clears throat> so let's look at this thing over here. Alright, so let's go down to our CSS. The first thing we're going to do is do the is do the uh, the div ID of my bio. Alright, so in our CSS we do hashtag my bio, then we do our curly braces, right? And we're going to do text align center. Now it's saved, great. Now if we preview it, let's see if it made any changes. Now everything is centered. Great. Um, all right. What's next? Um, let's do our name stuff, right? Our name class. Remember, our name class was the H1 over here. So we can give it a font family of Helvetica or whatever you want. Sans serif means not those little uh, those little uh, lines at the uh, like on your. Let me show you what a serif. I think I've talked about this before. Like what is a serif? Like these little things over here, these are serifs. Sans serif means without serifs. So this would be sans serif, this would be with serifs. <laughs> now you know, learn something. 
Maybe. Maybe you knew that already. Where were we? All right. So we're now, now we're going to do a class of name, right? So dot name. Oops. There we go. All right. Class of name. Now, again, these are the, the suggestions that they gave you. But you, and you can try, try out different things. If you don't want to do Helvetica, you don't want to make your font size something different besides 32. You, you, you want it to be, uh, I don't know, underlined or, or whatever it is. Try out different things. So font, family. I'm going to go with, like, uh, Garamond. I don't care if it has serifs or not. I don't know if, Gar if Garamond has serifs by itself. Anyways. <coughs> uh, update for me. Great. Let's snooze that. Um, font dash size. I'll stick with the 32 pixels. And text dash declaration. Underline. is fine. All right. Great. Now, if I preview it, my did my h1 because it has the class of name you see that's different all right so it is with serifs all right garamond has serifs uh da -da. let's change it to i don't know like uh tahoma all right should save let's see if it changed see this is done Uh, where were we? All right. So next up, we've got uh, my photo. Dot my photo class. What do they want? They have width of 300, height of 300, and a border. Width of 300 px. Make sure you put on the px. It's just pixels. Height of 300. And there are other ways to do do it besides pixels. You could do it like percentage and stuff like that different ways to uh, size your photos. Um, and a border. All right, border of three pixels and with solid. And this is the color of the border. Two, 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 two. All right, let's preview that, see what that looks like. See, now our picture is a lot smaller, and it's got kind of this uh, blackish color over here. All right, my description. That's another class. Those are for the, our paragraphs, right? My description. What do they want? All right, a width of 500. That sounds fine. Width. Uh, 500 pixels and a margin of 10 pixels and do it automatically auto Oops, I don't need the extra space there and just as an aside like it says using height with border can sometimes make elements larger than you expect using width with border can sometimes make elements larger than you expect so that just means like um, it's just like a it's not an error. It's just sometimes people don't take into account how big the the the, the border is going to be on your picture. So things might overlap when you don't want them to overlap. All right. Anyways, let's take a look at what my paragraphs look like now. All right. <laughs> now they're over here like this. All right. The last thing we have to worry about are these um, these uh, these links over here. All right, and then the site links. Dot. Whoops, what did I do? Ah. Sorry about that. All right, dot site links. Um, they just have the color. They just have a make them red. All right, so let's preview this. Right. Now they're red. 
But I want to try some other things, right? I don't like that these things are over here, right? Like this. I don't like that. Separate your image and text into separate divs. Give them class names. Style them, right? So that's something we can try. Add a target attribute to your link so that it's a self, blank, top. Which is the target attribute to? Add some more of your own uh, styling using uh, w3schools.com or just try Googling. Or use beautiful flat button CSS, for example. Right, let's try, let's look up. Beautiful flat buttons. Do it like, let me see, that's some nice buttons here. Hmm, let's go with this um, pomegranate here. Let's do this or uh screw the top. What color do I want? Let me see. Sunflower button. Let's just copy like all this, right? Mm. Do the sunflower color. So go from here to here. Let's copy this. Let's go to our uh, HTML. Let me get rid of this site links thing. All right, give these things. A class of dot sun flower button. Instead of site links. <clears throat> Let's see what that does. Oh, did it save it? Uh oh. Did I mess things up? Oh, I put the dot in front. That's why. Then, yeah, make sure you don't put the dots up here. You only, <laughs> only put the dots down here in your actual CSS. All right. All right, now you can see this is what our, our, our buttons look like now. Not the greatest, but, <laughs> but you get it, the idea of what they might look like. I didn't really like that, but whatever. All right, one thing I want to do is, what time is it? Nine, all right, it's 9.18 now, so my next class is at 9.32. I want to finish this up. I want to get these things separate from my picture over here. All right, there's different ways to do that. Um, <clears throat> let's go back over to my HTML. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my picture, put it up here. I'm going to put it underneath and see how that looks. All right. That's one way we can do it. This is one way to do it, right? Now we've got our links and all that kind of stuff. I'm still not crazy about the, this thing over here. Let me see. I don't like those buttons. I'm going to try something different. Get rid of that. Yuck. All right. Uh, let's go. Let's try. This one, I think, is a W3 schools. Well, this one's not bad. Let's try this. All right.
you know, different colors if you want. Um, <clears throat> all right, let me see where we're going. Deck over here. Dark button. All right, so we'll change this from the sunflower button to just button. All right, let's preview that. That's a little nicer, right? I like that better. All right, one thing I'm gonna do is I want my buttons to be like on top of, well, like, let's take a look. Right here, like I said, if I put in another link, it's going to just put it on the side over here, and that's fine. If I wanted to be on top of them, top of each other, I could put them each each link in the, the different paragraphs if I wanted to, or I could do other things, you know, as far as how I wanted to order it. This is what I have on everything right now, right? Let's say let's try something else. Um, let's say for my my bio, right? I want to put in. Or for my div, right? I want to put in a. Um, you know, I want to put a border like around the whole thing, or. Um, hmm. You could do like a background color. Oops, background dash color. I don't know what. Mm, beige. <laughs> try that. Try beige. See if that works. All right. Now we have our our stuff is beige in the background. All right. <coughs> Some colors you can just type in the word, and I'll put it in for you. Some most of the time you're gonna want to put use uh, our colors with um, the hexadecimal option as far as so that we can get the exact color that you want. So these are some different things you could try, all right? And maybe I want to, you see at the bottom over here where the uh, the link ends, where there are buttons, there's like, it goes right to the white. I'll put a little space there. So I'm going to put, I'll uh, give my um, stuff a little bit of a margin. Fifty pixels auto, try that. A little bit there. Let me see. I want it in the, in the bottom too. Let me see. Oh, maybe it's not margin. Maybe it's padding. Padding is different. Padding and margin are two different things. All right. Um, we're gonna get into like um, what all, all these things are as far as when we have to think about our images and the, how much space they take up. Didn't work. I want some space between over here. No, there it goes. All right. So now we've got a little bit of padding with like a little extra space. Let's see. What else do I want to try out? Let's try out one more thing. Let's give it a width of, hmm, let's try a 50%. Let's try that out. See if that does anything. Now it's fifty percent of our screen, but it's all the way on the left, which it could be fine. But I just thought that wasn't what I was going for. All right, so let's get rid of that. Now it takes up the whole screen. Okay, well we got some options here. Again, mess around with different things. See what it is that you like. All right. Uh, Mess around with like uh, how your links work, what they, what your links look like, um, all kinds of different things. And when you're ready, of course, you just go ahead and publish your website. So, like, say I was done, you go to File, publish your website, copy the URL, and then you're gonna turn that in. 
All right, so I hope this is some kind of help for you guys. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get ready for my next class or my next babysitting class, and I will see you guys um, today. Adios, muchachos y muchachas.